This is one of those funny topics. Um, a rare example of what would I would consider like introspection from someone in Hollywood, uh, which is very rare in my current, in my opinion, in current year, uh, a, a certain amount of introspection is fairly rare. Uh, and this is from Bounding Into Comics, and it says, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop star Mustafa Shakir on series cancellation. Maybe the haters and the critics got us. Maybe it wasn't as good as we thought. Mm-hmm. Um, what they call haters uh, or trolls, that's the one they always use, like, internet trolls. I'm like, they're not internet trolls. They're literally your target audience telling you what they want. Uh, there's a comics channel called Comics Matter with your boy Zach. It's, it used to be Diversity in Comics. And he's like, it's free it's literally free customer like uh, Intel, right? Yeah. You look at the comments and you get all this feedback for free that you don't even, you don't have to pay focus groups. These people are going to go out of their way to tell you what they want. Some of it might not be phrased the most politely, but they're going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And in these things, they tend to write anything negative off as trolls or just people hating because they're not, you know, because it's uh, coming into some new type of Hollywood, whether it's diversity and uh, we, whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, all these things that people uh, have opinions about. And they, but what they're really doing is telling you, like, you're going to use a property that we have a deep amount of reverence for, <coughs> that we have put a lot of time into watching in another medium. We would, uh, we would, uh, we would hope that you would pay as much respect to this property as we do with the amount of money we spend on it and the amount of time we invest in watching it. Can you at least put that same amount of time and uh, love into how you make this interpretation of it? And they tend to just write those people off because they don't like to, mm. they, they don't like being criticized. And a lot of it is, is like when you change things nowadays, when you make these things about, um, uh, you know, identity politics, they come with what are, are like built in shields. Like you're not allowed to criticize this or you're this or that. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. You listen to your audience. You make a Spider-Man movie like no way home. You make a show like Cobra Kai. You'll make the, the, the large box office. You'll get the, the season five order that shows would love to get, most shows would love to get this, uh, get these days. Right. Mm -hmm. This show got canceled after three weeks. Wow. It was only out for three weeks and they're like, no, no season two. Uh, yeah. For a, a property the size of Cowboy Bebop, that's insane. So it says, uh, from Spencer Bakuli, not uh, our second favorite. Yeah, our second favorite, not our favorite yeah. favorite. Uh, so it says, in light of a damning three, uh, of its damning three-week lifespan, one of the stars of Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, Mustafa Shakir, has begun to mull the idea that rather than haters and critics, the series, uh, the series' abrupt cancellation was caused by the fact that, quote, it wasn't as good as we thought. Uh, Shakir explained his realization on December 10th, the day after the streaming giant off officially announced that it would not be moving forward with any more seasons of the ill-fated live-action anime adaptation. In accompaniment to an Instagram shared uh, in reflection of his time as the Bebop's de facto leader, Jet Black, quote, What a cool opportunity, right? Wrote Shakir alongside a black and white image of himself on set as Jet. I got to play Jet Black. I'll never not be him, so to speak. That's mm -hmm. badass to me. Like, that's good. That means mm. that that's him being like, he clearly was enjoying the role, right? Uh, noting that, quote, at Netflix uh, went balls to the walls for us in order to get it done. The actor then offered his thanks for how, quote, they really looked after us when shit hit the fan. <laughs> they, though he did not elaborate on what specific events he's referring to. They didn't, uh, they didn't look out for you. They canceled it in three weeks. Mm -hmm. I would say he, sh he should have a bone to pick with <clears throat> Netflix. Like mm -hmm. you put all this money and time into one season and then you cancel that quickly. What went wrong? Seriously. Why, how did this get from idea from a uh, uh, production meeting uh, and pitch to script to camera to, to audience and nobody thought along the ways, maybe this is good. Maybe this should be done differently. How did it make it that far without them realizing that it was going to have a reaction like this? I, I think it must just speak to corporate incompetence, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's the, uh, it's their inability to, to realize that uh, when you take properties like this, you're just asking to be hyper criticized mm -hmm. and to be uh, looked, everything's looked at with a fine tooth comb. You know, member berries and, and mm -hmm. Easter eggs can only go so far when there's no love for the source material. But That's no, true. I'm not quite familiar with the timeline. So did the criticism begin before the show dropped? Yeah, Way before. it was before, too. Yeah. Okay, so to be fair, that makes me think of all the criticisms against, let's say, 
people who are cast as Batman. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. I yep. mean, so the fans aren't always right. Yeah. No, know? no. But but those criticisms, I don't know, do they have to be evaluated? Like, what if they had listened and fired Michael Keaton before he was Batman, you know? Mm-hmm. I think part of it was that it was what Daniel Pineda being cast as Faye Valentine. Yeah. And then she pushes back because they're mad because she doesn't look like Faye. Like, she w- oh. they didn't dress her like Faye Valentine looks in the anime. Yeah. Uh, that's how, that's, that's how that and, usually starts with mm-hmm. these yep. kind of properties. It's just like, oh, you can't cast him. Oh, it, what are you doing with the costume? Do, yeah. you know? and, and then the other thing is like, but did Michael Keaton get on Twitter when he was cast as Batman right. and say, you're a bunch of uh, incel man babies and you don't, nah, 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 nah. no, yeah. the yeah. smart ones stay quiet. Uh, all yeah. they have to, I said, literally all they have to do in these situations is come on and say, it's like, I know that there's some changes being made. I know that this isn't 110% like the anime, but we're really proud of what we've created. We have a lot of respect for the source material. We know that you have your reservations, but could you please give it a chance and give us an opportunity to win you over? Well, it's the same thing. Like, um, you know how like Netflix is doing a lot of Korean dramas based on webtoons. Like, um, are you familiar with home sweet home? No. Okay. So it's basically a horror, um, one of their horror webtoons uh, adaptations. Basically, they didn't really do it exactly like how the comic book is. Um, I read a little bit of the beginning comic book and then I lost track where I was. But I really liked the comic book, but how they did it in the Netflix adaptation, they added more story in the beginning. So the main character, he's going to his apartment. It's kind of like a cheap apartment. He's like, yeah, I don't have my family anymore, which in the comic book, they talk the same thing. Like, he doesn't have his family, but they didn't really say that he's, like, uh, a gamer. Okay. They just say, like, he's just an outcast and he's just a hermit. But then later, when all these monsters come out of nowhere, he becomes the hero. But in the comic book, like, he kind of gets attacked first. Same Mm -hmm. thing in the adaptation, but they added a little bit more where he's just walking around. And then, like, some ladies like let me in i'm so hungry and then like she turns into a ghoul right away Hmm. they could do the same thing but like also not a lot of people are familiar with webtoons but they are familiar with cowboy bebop it came out before i was born that's what I'm I saying. Believe. Like, uh, they get more leeway when mm-hmm. it's when it's less known properties. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, just make something new, and you don't have all of these mm-hmm. landmines you have to step over right. while creating. When stuff. you just do a live action Sailor Moon, I know they did it in and Japan just, already. Just shut the actors up. Just don't <laughs> yeah. don't let Muzzle them yeah. don't let them talk back to the fans before the show comes out. I don't know how hard that can be. Like. I get it. Like you, it doesn't feel good when people say something negative about you. Marvel but makes their actors sign a contract. Why isn't it in the contract? This should be in every mm-hmm. actor's contract it, with yeah. something like this. Just, just avoid. Like any time, like somebody says something negative about me, uh, the the way I see it is, is like uh, if I get you jelly jelly. If I no no, it's nothing good. <laughs> if I get like fifty positive comments on something that I post. And I never even have the time to really say anything back. I just because I just post and ghost like with this mm-hmm. with like my skating stuff with mm-hmm. anything. I post because I, I've been posting these videos every day for several years. It's just part of like I'll I'll heart the comments or whatever. But if somebody posts something positive, I might not necessarily respond. So if I'm not going to respond to the nice things, why the hell would I give the time of day to the negative things? Your it's your job to do the role that they portrait that they've got together for you Mm -hmm. if that's not in line with what the fans want that's on the studio but it's on you to back their play and just keep quiet and give this thing the best opportunity it has to come out well Mm. and to to antagonize fans i feel like that should come as second nature like if I'm customer service, I'm not allowed to just tell the guy who called me a piece of crap that he's a piece of crap because it reflects bad on the company and it reflects you're not just you. You're a representative of this. I don't care if you're an independent contractor or if because it's a role, it's just one movie. You're representing this as a brand now. It's your job to do that. Hmm. And part of that is being bigger than the people who are talking to you like that. Exactly. One, because they might have a point. Mm-hmm. And two, because you should just be the bigger person. Yeah, you remember when I told you about that one email when before we hired Carter and like the day of when Carter started, like his 
very first day he got a hate email yeah and they're like why didn't you hire me i could have done it better and mm. i answered it this way i was like i'm so sorry you feel that way we're slowly looking at job applicants right now mm. hopefully they'll look at your job applications and look at your samples as soon as possible you might hear something from them mm. thank you for applying yep but you're and not you're not sorry he felt that way <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't feel that way because like this guy legit said i know where you guys live i could have walked up to your property and gave you these samples and i'm like that doesn't sound like a stalker at all um but basically that's what i said because like again like i represent like tim cast like just answering the emails mm -hmm. so you need like to be like the bigger person and just like i'm so yeah. sorry yeah we're wrong we're wrong my bad um yeah customer is always right mm -hmm. Um, you just need to please people a certain way. I, you're, just, you're a representative of something bigger than you. Mm -hmm. exactly. Your paycheck is only a small amount of the funding that went in to make this a reality. Exactly. It's, it's your right. job to represent it in the best possible way. Right. Uh, it's, uh, so it says, quote, this, they're talking about his quotes from here when basically says like, maybe it wasn't as good as <laughs> we thought it was. It says, all I know is that we, got, that we got this done under the craziest conditions and I'm proud of what we did. He ultimately concluded, thank you for dreaming with us. See you space cowboys, forever yours, jet black. It says the solemn and gracious exit statement by Shakir, who despite the show's overall quality was regularly praised as the least offensive thing about it stands in stark contrast to the tantrum thrown by Cowboy Bebop script supervisor, Naomi Markman on the day of this, of the series cancellation taking to Twitter on December 9th, Markman boasted quote, not to rub it in your faces, but as the individual who has read the, the Cowboy Bebop season two scripts more than anyone else in this world, you, uh, effing missed out uh, you you more than anyone else in the world missed out so basically she's saying like mm. it's your fault you're not going to get to see season two of this awesome show uh, before eventually crying foul after receiving pushback for the very same people she previously antagonized hmm. my dear troll friends there's that word hmm. my dear troll friends you do realize that literally hundreds of people lost their jobs today right jobs we loved and cared about asked Markman uh, after discovering that the idea of the second season of Cowboy D Bebop was a resoundingly un <laughs> Bebop was a resoundingly unpopular opinion from uh, unpopular from audiences so basically like mm -hmm. she's like this se this second season is going to be so good but these people are like but season one wasn't good, so why would we want that? Hmm. Uh, I thought the first episode wasn't bad. Like, the opening, it wasn't that bad. I I just, I don't know. I just don't like Daniela, um, Daniela Pineda. 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 Attempt, attempting to I elicit. I don't like her as a person. Yeah. Attempting to elicit sympathy for the insulting <laughs> job by her and the rest of Cowboy Bebop's production team. That's. That's mm -hmm. editorializing yeah. sure, heavily. Sure. Uh, Markman then argued, quote, just because you don't like the food at the restaurant doesn't mean that you would celebrate it when it closes down. The F. Yeah, you would. You, you wouldn't mock the waiters or chefs. And I beg you, uh, I beg of you to touch some grass and give someone you love a hug. That's just like. It's a bad day for the a, script supervisor. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, it's like. At the very like at the very least, you have to be like, okay, maybe it didn't turn out that well. Just move on to the next project, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I get what she's saying, but I just think that it's like people told you this was going to go bad. You didn't listen to them. You pushed forward and made it the way you wanted to make it, anyways. And then when what they said was going to go wrong went wrong, mm -hmm. you're angry, right? Like, what do you do? Go <laughs> on, Boomer Buck. <laughs> Rant there. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of want to blame Netflix for this. Yeah. I mean, shouldn't they have mm -hmm. just had some patience? Yeah. Like, I mean, they should have. I mean, in, in terms of, to use a poker term, they're committed to the pot at this point. Well, mm -hmm. So they I mean, might as well get a couple seasons in and then see where you go. Depending on how expensive it is to make, and outside of the fact that, like, okay, nobody likes season one, this lady might lose her job anyways, because if they're going to go season two, they might want to take the direction an entirely different way. They're like, there okay. There was a lot of special effects into this, like, um, whole product. So, so it's expensive. Yeah, it's, so it's really very expensive. expensive. But it's all expensive, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, so I don't, I don't know if that's really a metric that they're that concerned about. I could well, be wrong. John be. Cho probably costs a lot of money he just to get John Cho. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure he's very well paid mm -hmm. as an actor. Mm -hmm. So. Um, to me, this is one of those things where the, like, it, how is it that the fans see this coming from a mile away mm -hmm. years before this comes out? As soon as you see the disrespect to the character saying the clothing is stupid, uh, hypersexualization, man, baby, once the buzzwords start coming in, mm -hmm. there's problems and people can see it coming from a mile away. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's not getting the fact like how faithful is it to the adaptation? That doesn't mm -hmm. matter. If you can't get your actors to do something as simple as be polite to the fans, all of the fans 
mm-hmm. then a lot of times you're you're underwater. I didn't see anything about um, <laughs> about uh, Zabka and uh, Larusse. You know, I didn't see them from Cobra mm-hmm. Kai talking about how the man babies are mad that the <laughs> this is happening in the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Right. John Cho should just get angry with like everybody who's like, especially the scriptwriter and then Daniela. Like he should just get angry and go like. Really? You mess with my paycheck. Yeah. I hope you don't get hired again. Yeah. Well, not that badly. The smart, I think yeah. he's a smart man. The smart mm-hmm. actors keep mm-hmm. their mouth shut mm-hmm. and just take the job as it is and try to decon like to separate themselves from that, right? Yeah. If I have to separate the art from the artist and mm-hmm. watch things with people who say horrible things about th- you know about so, about me on Twitter, um, the then act- the actors need to separate the noise from the work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, also both parties are responsible mm-hmm. here yeah mm-hmm. but also i was talking about like comparing old hollywood i'm not like calling them like old i'm just talking about actors who were before the internet and actors who are now with the internet mm. like they have different personalities and they have like different like th- they know how to deal with their fans like tom cruise um john cho like he's from old hollywood where like they know how to play to the fans mm-hmm. and be nice mm-hmm. to them because they know fans are where the income is you need to be a people pleaser more people will give you more um money but new actors like daniela she doesn't realize that like mm-hmm. these man babies they're giving her money mm-hmm. yep. she just needs to shut up yep mm-hmm. i understand like you don't want to dress up a certain way you can just say oh yeah we're just doing a different outfit change mm-hmm. or and, don't take the role oh yeah exactly because like yeah. we're reading an article where she's like i can't bl- i'm so happy they chose me my flat butt and i'm like what does your flat butt have to do with anything mm-hmm. they're remaking mm-hmm. firefly now oh and, really yeah i never watched the original. train wreck i'm sure i can't like yeah. mm-hmm. That you talk about rabid fan bases, holy crap! Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, how are they going to do it even without Nathan Fillion? Uh, uh, like, they're like, yeah, it's, but it's got to be this, it's got to be that, mm-hmm. it's got to be this. Well, this doesn't really work anymore. I'm like, so it's not Firefly. Mm-hmm. Basically, like they're listing all the things that they're going to change about it. I'm like, so why call it Firefly? <laughs> call it Fire. Uh, call it something else. Call it anything but Firefly. Trash fire. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, it's the same thing with. Star Trek yeah. with the movies. Oh man, or well, or just uh, Discovery and mm-hmm. uh, and Picard. Yeah, which nobody likes. <laughs> it, it's just oof. Yep. Because like um, our boss Tim, he loves Star Trek. Old Star Trek. Yep, yep. he loves it. And yep. like um, the new ones, I don't know what's his opinion about the. New I don't ones. know if he's seen uh, Discovery or Picard. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know because like I knew a lot of people were complaining about that and then, total misuse of Anson Mount's talent mm-hmm. Anson Mount is a fantastic actor yeah hmm. I, I haven't know. seen them but I, I that it is surprising to hear because one of the main writers on that series is one of the, probably the greatest living novelists that we have Michael mm-hmm. Chabon yes so I'm not really sure how uh, he got tangled up in such a such a dumpster fire well like when you see a big title like Star Trek like you're like, oh, yeah, I want to put my name into it. Maybe it mm. might put my name at a higher level. Yeah, if he's already the uh, very big, then he doesn't need to be yeah. attached to something like that. Well, he's like also that. the screenwriter mm-hmm. of Spider-Man 2, the original mm-hmm. Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. So, Yay! I mean, he's not he's not naive to the, you know, action. Mm-hmm. It's just process. it's just bogged down with ridiculous identity politics and mm-hmm. oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I see. it's that's it nothing to do with the filmmaking. It's got everything to do with how it's all of the the themes and all of the things that they're talking about will not make any sense in five years because it's not evergreen content. I see. Uh, it's all going to be like what? But what? isn't that what it made the original Star Trek awesome? Is that it was evergreen content essentially that mm-hmm. speaks to many generations? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it did progressivism in a way that really, really resounded and, and had uh, a nuanced and balanced take. Uh, the new stuff is very, very bad. I guess mm. in my per- in my personal opinion, but mm. that's I'm also hyper aware of that stuff. So mm, yeah. sure. it I is haven't what it is. watched it, yeah. so I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but I know the backlash. <laughs> Anson mm. Mount is fantastic, though. If you ever saw Hell on Wheels on AMC, it mm-hmm. was very, very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But yes, uh, that was that was fun. Yeah, it always uh, does. Uh, I feel bad ending on that one. Uh, <laughs> like it is what it is. Uh, it's okay. I, I think this is for the best. They're going to room re- and just. Well, so just to leave on a fantastic note, if you want a, a depressingly fantastic way to go out, they're going to ruin Mega Man next. No! <laughs> they're making a Mega Man uh, Netflix Leave my show. Mega High alone. Uh, you're, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. No, what? leave it alone. I Okay, if they want to make a good Mega Man movie, look at um, Sonic for Hire. <laughs> hmm. um, it's, a, it's a YouTube 
cartoon series where like these guys um they're from lowbrow and it's so funny like they have all the cartoon video game characters together and sonic can't look for a job so he's like for hire like he will do anything for you and like there's a little <laughs> bit of mega man he's like yeah just take care of my dog and his dog is a robot dog huh. L- live action mega man what could possibly wow. go wrong everything yeah pretty much everything, everything but also just a pitch for hollywood there's a movie called karen why don't they just make a movie called um overreactant hollywood and it's just a satire. Catchy title. <laughs> <laughs> and it it's just far. a satire. <laughs> they could do that. I mean, uh, impulse, t- impulse tweet. Impulse, impulse tweet. tweet. Like that's, Tweeters. That's what it is. Like a lot of times they end up deleting this stuff later. It's like, yeah. why can't you just read it over? You know that what's the what's that saying? It's like uh, if you write something mean, like uh, put it in a drawer and wait a day. Yep. And if you still and if you don't still feel the same way, don't send it. Can, if, write your tweet out. Put it in your draft folder. Wait a day. And if your snarky response that involves the words incel, man, baby, or various <laughs> other things, if it if it still doesn't burn in your heart as need uh, like important to say, just delete it. What That's, if it's beautiful? Delete it. Yep. What about that saying? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. That that works too. But, but there is something to say for purging it for your own personal sake. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's something that Anne Hathaway has talked about doing her whole life: is yeah. writing very angry, sternly worded letters to people and mm-hmm. then just destroying them. Yeah, I do oh, that. that. I do that a lot. Yeah, yeah of course. I do that on a re- like, uh, like I'll write a, re- a mean response and then I just always delete it because yep. I don't. I've gotten it out of my system. That's mm-hmm. all I needed to mm-hmm. do, right? That's or you it. can just be unhealthy like me and just hold it inside and it's <laughs> there's that <laughs> well there's something you said like it's still technically i'm holding it in i'm yeah. just writing it out and manifesting no, I no think, like i hold it in. i think that the purging of uh, of words onto a page is so powerful yeah. like i really believe that more I, than i, I thought in that. yeah i hold it in and then one day it's keep just, a hate journal is that a thing yeah it's it can it be. is sure it can be yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.